Have you ever seen five men like that? I don't think I have. <laughs> yeah, right. Look at look in a mirror. Not my legs like that. My legs. <laughs> That is attached to a 28 waist though. extensions and lunges. I don't try to get too scientific and figure out what the difference is because on one given day I might have close grip or widespread. It's going to hit different parts of the thigh, different parts of the hamstring. Big four leg exercises. Today I'm doing lunges, leg press, squats and extensions. The next time that might change. I might do half squats, single leg leg press, single leg leg extensions, and uh, you know, different variations of leg equipment. We've got body masters, flex equipment, I carry in, different types of equipment. So my suggestion is to pick three or four exercises per body part, work your legs, and then pick three or four different ones on the next time. Don't get scientific about the inner head or the outer head of the quadricep. Train and train hard. That's the key to the game. Right now I'm on my third exercise, it's a squat. On any given day I might walk in and start with squats. 
So sometimes I'm stronger or weaker depending on where I do the squats in my routine. But every time I try to put it all out on the line, train as hard and as heavy as I can. I said some intense workouts this week, as always. I mean, there's no man who trains harder anywhere. I truly believe that if uh, Ronnie put his mind to it, he could set the all-time record in powerlifting, and now that he'd be the greatest bodybuilder of all time, but the greatest powerlifter of all time also. Well, when, I, when Ronnie first walked in here, you know, and he'd never even been in a bodybuilding contest or anything, I'm the kind of person where I see a person's potential. I want to take them as far as they can go. We've had some great bodybuilders here, but no one that could ever compare to Ronnie. I mean, when he first walked in the door, his arms were already over 20 inches. He had a red sweatshirt and sweatpants on, and you could see the veins in his legs through the sweatpants. And when I saw that, it just it just blew me. Um, just had to pay his dues and keep plugging it out, and it certainly did pay off. And my gosh, now I don't see anyone even near him anymore. I think Ronnie could be Mr. Olympia until he's 45, 50 years old if he wanted to be. que pueden carecer de la fuerza o la confianza para hacer sentadilla con peso libre. Para aislar al máximo los cuadrices, intentad hacer sentadilla frontal con el multipower. Mantened la barra sobre la parte frontal de los hombros y juntad más los pies. Esta técnica no solo aísla e incrementa la intensidad del entrenamiento de los cuadrices. If you don't have a V-shape or anything, there's nothing that will give you a good shape like chins. And then you can go into the dead, dead, the dead, um, the, the rows afterwards. But I really swear by chinning. out just to see the muscles being worked and uh, I usually train in long sleeve covered up things so I can sweat it's pretty hot and humid here it's about 98 degrees in California right now so we're six weeks from the show and I want to just so you can get a close-up view of how the muscles work and what the body looks like when I'm working it and uh, after today's back exercises I'll put my shirt back on stay covered up for another four weeks about two weeks out from the show, I'll take it off and we'll see what kind of physical changes I've gone through based on the dieting and the cardio. But today I'll train without my shirt on for you. You want to do five and then you want to plug. You go five, eight times, take off two plates and I'll take more. Out of all the back exercises, this is 
definitely one of the hardest ones to do, most taxing on the body. When you get into doing drop sets, it's even worse. This ranks right up there with deadlifts. But uh, if I'm doing them and you're not, you'll know come day of the contest. It's a big thickness difference. I'm doing the basics, heavy for reps, getting ready for a show, as opposed to using machines, trying to find the easy way out. This is how you do it. Yeah. Okay, uh, you know, God had, I think God has a plan for everybody. And uh, my plan, the plan God had for me was for me to be Mr. Olympia. I've always trained hard. I always set m my sights on being the best I could be. And basically for me, you know, when I first started out, you know, I didn't, 92 was my first Olympia. I didn't get a call out. Not even able to stick with it because uh, I've always been a real, very focused type person. And, uh, you know, when God has a plan for you, 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 the plan always goes through because it's God's will that you be. Once I take the sodium out and cut my water a little and put the carbs in, it gives the muscles a different look, a fuller, much drier, crisper look, which I've been in very, very good condition and what I need to look like in uh, uh, this year it will be something else, let me tell you. Uh, I think, uh, you know, anyone else being in better condition than I will be. For sure, um, but we'll, we'll see. Work the inner portion of the back. We're doing close grip. Work on the middle lat thickness. And uh, I think of myself as an Olympic rower when I do this exercise. I want to stretch as far forward as I can so that I have a long row all the way back. I'm trying not to swing my shoulders back. Just stay perpendicular. Pulling it in tight to my stomach, right to my belly button. And literally squeeze it, squeeze the muscle to bring out the detail. And each set is heavier than the next. I usually go up about 40 pounds each set. Maxing out at 300, which is all the machine can hold. I like to do about 12 repetitions. If I can't get the 12 repetitions with the weight that I'm using, instantaneously I drop set. Because I gotta get 12. That's the magic number in here. Once again, stretch and squeeze is the main thing when you're doing back, biceps, quadriceps, stretch and squeeze. All right. A lot of people don't know about bodybuilders getting ready for the Mr. Olympias. Most of us right now are not Roddy Coleman. So we don't throw around 200 pound dumbbells 
uh, or Kevin Laroni pressing 500 pounds on the bench press. And you have to realize that body, bodybuilding is relative. A lot of it's relative to how much you weigh that determines how strong you are. And of course, as you get older, you pay more attention to injury. I saw a lot of careers come and go. Rich Gasperi, Barry DeMay, Dorian Yates, all ended their careers with torn muscles because they, uh, the style of training, possibly using too much heavy weight, um, possibly training harder and heavier at times when they should have listened to their bodies a little bit more. I've been around 13 years in the pro scene. I've had a few nicks here and there, but I've always been smart enough to know that when I'm on low calories, high extensive cardiovascular work, not very many carbohydrates. These are just pull downs to the rear. Usually I alternate these with pull downs to the front. When I go up to the back, I usually picture myself on stage doing a rear back double bicep. So I don't need a whole lot of weight here. I actually want to squeeze the muscle as I pull it down. In order to do that, you have to control the weight, not let the weight control you. This isn't going to get me real big, but it'll definitely help bring out the cuts and the detail. Three, bring it down to the base of the neck. Four, five, and come all the way up. Six, seven. You don't want to try to waste any energy in between sets, talking with your friends, distracting you from your workout. That's why I require all my workout partners to count the repetitions. That way I know they're paying attention, number one, to the workout. And number two, they're not inviting other people to come into the workout and distract them by talking about football, movies, girls, or whatever. So to keep the pace and the rhythm, we count each other's reps, and we make sure that they don't need any spots for if we want to do drop sets, we're there to do it. Wayne soon put his personal and training problems behind. He trained at the gold Good. 
That's good. Keep them on. Everyone on out. Yeah. Good. Point it up, squeeze it. And again. Squeeze it back. Yeah. That's good. It's strong. Still there. Shoulder raise, but I used a bar, a uh, small bar, and I did. Uh, I think that was 90 pounds, 80, uh, 80, yeah, 90 pounds. Yeah, it was 90 pounds for uh, two, three minutes uh, rest in between that.
train by myself. And then when I needed somebody to critique me and so on, then I would come to Steve and he would tell me how I'm going and so on. On Mondays, I would do shoulders and triceps and traps. Once again, he needed a little kick in the ass. And the following year, as you could see, what he did, I mean, you know, he broke right into the top five and did a real good showing in Toronto, a real good showing at Night of Champions. The shows, and so I was training competitively since December of 96, getting ready for the Mr. Olympia in September of 97, and not really having the time to relax and rest on my laurels, fighting with Flex all the way to the contest, and then having to fight, fight with Richard all the way to his contest, and now it's my turn. And I really like that because I put the pressure on myself to suddenly take my physique from ground zero to what I felt I had to improve on and become perfect. And I don't know if my physique is perfect, but it's perfect. <laughs> I can't even say hopefully, I just go to the show and come in the best condition I can come in. You know, I don't really worry about what the judges place me, so I know I've done all I can do, so. And the following week after the Arnold, I got to see in Jose. You know, I qualified for the Olympia, that's what I really wanted to do, was get the Olympia this year, which I qualified for, so after the San Jose, I'll have three months to. Yeah. Come on! One more! That's all! Yeah! Just 
Yesterday I started out with shoulders. I did the seated shoulder press. Started out with my light warm up as I always do. I warm up with every on all most of the, all the exercises. Started out with 135, 15. Again I go to 225 for 12. Then I do uh, 275 for 12. And uh, this is all season training. So I went up to 315. That's normally about as high as I go. I did 315 also, 12. And immediately following when that, I go over to what I call <clears throat> my uh, dumbbell ladder. I start out, what I mean by giant set, I do uh, four, ex four uh, sets back to back. And I start out with 30, and I do 25 reps. And then I go to 40, uh, 15 reps. Then I go to 50, for uh, 10 reps, and then I go to 60 for uh, 8 reps, and I follow that up real quickly uh, with another set, but I start off just a little bit heavier, like 10 pounds heavier on the next set. I do the same thing for 25, then 50 for 15, and then uh, I do the 60 for 10 and 70 for 8. Uh, after that, you know, those are my two main shoulder ones, but I do also, also do one, like one more shoulder exercise to go with that, make it, make it three. I only do like two, uh, 
two sets back to back, even though they giant sets.
See that chunky movement?
wasn't there. And then I decided to change, revamp my training totally. I spoke to stay the Olympia. I'd be coming in about 262. My current weight now is 275, three weeks out from the, the Olympia. dedication that you're going to set your mind to it and uh, go ahead and compete. Uh, this year for Olympia, <clears throat> after two years of resting, I decided to compete mostly because I believe that right now is the time uh, for change. Uh, Flex Wheeler winning uh, three shows this spring and then myself winning Canada and Chris Cormier and other champions. I believe there is a little bit, you know, trend towards a more aesthetic looking aesthetically pleasing looking, uh, symmetrical proportionate physiques more than just uh, muscle mass freaks. Uh, me as a bodybuilder, I have to say that I do admire very much so all those uh, champions, Dorian especially, Nasser, Jean-Pierre Fuchs, uh, um, Mike Francois. <sighs>
El pectoral contractor, PECDEC, permite hacer una especie de aperturas en máquina. Cuando trabajamos el pecho con este aparato, podemos hacerlo de forma muy estricta y a través de un intervalo completo de recorrido. Por lo tanto, resulta un ejercicio excelente para conseguir el máximo de relieve muscular y definición. Para sacar el máximo partido de esta máquina, debemos usarla básicamente con pesos ligeros y altas repeticiones. En vez de usar resistencias pesadas, no usar pesos excesivos es muy importante. Añadir demasiadas placas implica un exceso de tensión en la articulación. You know, the training I take serious, dieting I take serious, but contests I just take as fun, you know. I mainly do the contests for the fiends and just to get the reaction going. He spends his time preparing himself and his body for the next challenge. In 1995, I came back at 22 and won the Tournament of Champions out in California. Just knowing that I would get the publicity that I needed, and, and uh, of course, by that time, I had put on drastically much more size. Uh, competed at 241 there, uh, won the show, basically piece of cake. Uh, 
and then everything basically started to happen. I mean, I was uh, offered a WIDA contract. I wasn't even a professional yet. Um, and shot with all the magazines, got my first Muscle and Fitness cover. I uh, was on the mu cover of Muscle Mag, uh, you know, and, and uh, my career took off. So in the ne next year, I decided <laughs> to do the Nationals. I wanted to wait a year, so in 96, I won the Nationals as a heavyweight, earned my professional status. Of course, I uh, signed a leader contract uh, in 96, and and uh, I was under contract with them, uh, you know, straight through. So, uh, you know, Joe's backed me up quite a bit in bodybuilding. And La mejor manera de describir las aperturas o vuelos de pectoral es imaginando un gran abrazo. Sujetamos el peso por encima de la cabeza con las palmas de las manos mirando hacia adentro, doblamos los brazos ligeramente y procuramos mantener los codos en el mismo ángulo durante todo, dependiendo de dónde deseemos concentrar el trabajo, en la parte media, alta o baja del pectoral. Recordad que las aperturas son un ejercicio de aislamiento, no exactamente para fuerza y tamaño. Utilizad un peso moderado y conseguir la intensidad necesaria dentro del uso de un estilo estricto intervalo completo de recorrido concentración y entrenamiento del músculo hasta su fallo momentáneo en cada una de las series If I don't win the contest, I'm doing everything I can do within my physical limitations to be fully prepared. And uh, I'm three weeks away from the Mr. Olympia. I was 219 pounds yesterday. And um, I feel strong, I feel confident, I'm refreshed. Uh, the one main objective is always there. And that is at the end, I'm ready to go into combat against the likes of Nasser, Ken Wheeler, Kevin Lavroni, and Ronnie Coleman. And uh, Every day, the good part about my attitude is that I'm very optimistic, and every day I reflect and say, yeah, I left it in the gym, I did my best, and let's, let's get on with the next day. And so here we are, I'm gonna do a little chest workout today, uh, training by myself, um, which is customary about a month before a show, because I train a little faster, a little lighter, and uh, my workouts are a little more intense because of the speed. So enough talking, let's get down to business. For me, three weeks before contest, 150 pounds is like 180 pounds, uh, which is what I usually will handle in the off season. If somebody the size of Dillette or uh, you know the size of Fuchs or one of those guys, and they're over there messing around with 100 pound dumbbells, and they weigh 300 pounds, you know, and here I am at you know 215, 220 pounds, and uh, I'm handling dumbbells around 180, 160, 150 range, and when you start putting it into relativity. Uh...
write down your training and your diet and you make adjustments from there you evaluate yourself after those two three weeks you know have I improved or have I gotten got worse have I gained body fat or lost body fat have I lost muscle or gained muscle and whatever your goal may be everyone has certain goals whether it be put on muscle get leaner uh, improve a body part uh, bring out detail in a certain area I mean there's many different ways to look at it so you have to like set your goals uh, specifically for yourself and and basically that's why I tell people you know just map everything out write it down and learn different you know try different things as far as foods try different uh, training routines whether it be high reps low reps uh, drop sets uh, sets to failure uh, forced repetitions you got to try it all I've, tr I've been through every single workout since day one and basically I learned around 21 when I was 21 years old that this kind of training style works for me and I haven't changed it since. Of course I've changed the schedules around which I think is important too. try training you know a certain number of days in a row and then uh, you know change that routine throughout the year but I found that now I don't need as much rest as I did when I was